Hey guys, it's Tanika and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be doing my makeup and answering some questions. So over on Instagram and in the YouTube community tab, I asked if you guys had any questions for me. I have a few here, so thank you to everyone who asked questions. So let's get into it. I'm not really going to concentrate too hard on the makeup, but I'll list everything down below. All right, I'm going to start by putting some of this hair back gently. I'm really trying to work on a routine to get my curls to look nice because I let them air dry. I've been playing around with a few different products, but most of the time I just look like really scraggy and I just haven't brushed my hair for three days. So I'm working on a routine, testing out different products to get some nice curls. I don't know, like some pieces of hair are still pretty straight, but then like underneath, is super curly. If you have any good recommendations, then let me know. I find like the curls, you know, they're there, but it's still really messy and frizzy. So let me know what you think. I'm going in with my infallible anti-redness primer, my favorite. I actually used this on my sister the other week because I did her, like we did a trial for her makeup for her formal this year. And oh my God, it just did not work for her. It neutralized her redness, but it didn't work for her skin type. So she has quite dry skin. I'm rather textured and it just looked so flaky and patchy. I was like, oh my God, what is going on? This is like my favorite primer ever and it's not working for her. So that was actually quite interesting and I guess good to know because I do recommend this primer a lot. My skin type is more normal combination. I get some breakouts, but I'm not overly dry. And so I think it just works better if your skin isn't overly dry. Instead on my sister, I end up going in with the Stila One Step Correct Primer and that worked a lot better for her skin type. All right, so let's get into some questions. First up, this is from Kate. She says, I'd love to know what you do for work and whether you would ever consider doing other people's makeup as a side gig. So for work, I am a store manager at a cafe. I have worked at this store for, I don't know, four to five years. It's been a while. It's not necessarily my dream job, but it pays the bills. The hours are very flexible. They work well with my schedule and I have the best boss in the world. So sometimes it's tough. It can be very busy, very high stress, but at the end of the day, I love the social aspect of it. And also just the hours really work well with my lifestyle. And then the second part of the question, if I would ever do other people's makeup, I just, I don't know. Like when I did my sister's makeup the other day, I really enjoyed it and like it was really fun, but I think I just have doubt in my ability because there are so many amazing makeup artists on Instagram and like there's a lot of competition out there, I guess, if you were going to be a freelance makeup artist. I think that doing makeup on other people is very, very, very different to doing makeup on yourself. You know, everyone's different skin types, their different face shapes, their skin tones, you know? There's a lot that goes into it and I just, I don't know if I really have a passion for it. I'm not completely throwing that option away right now, but I'm not diving into it head first either. Next question is from Abby and she says, what brand would you love to see come to Australia? And also, if you could collab with any brand, which brand would you love to work with? So I had to think about this and a brand I would love to see come to Australia is Colourpop. I know we can buy online, but shipping is pretty expensive. It takes a while to get here and I would just love to have the whole Colourpop range in a store where you can go and touch and feel and play with it. I think that would be really fun to browse through all their products. And I guess if I could collab with a brand, I would definitely want to do it with a more affordable brand because that is what I do like to promote on my channel. So maybe a brand like Colourpop that has a great range of products, they have decent products and they're well priced. I don't know, what do you think? Who would you collab with? 
The next question is from Teresa and she says, how are you holding up? I know you had a hard time when you had to postpone your wedding. Hope you're doing well, love your videos. So thank you, Teresa, and thank you for caring and asking that question. That's really kind. I am doing a lot better. I did really struggle when we had to postpone. It was kind of like a bit of a downward spiral for me. I did talk about going and getting help. I am still on the hunt for the right person for me. At first, I didn't want a man. I don't know, I just felt a little bit too vulnerable or just not as comfortable speaking to a man. But now I think I'm open to the idea, you know, they're all professionals, I may as well give it a go. But I think just sometimes time really helps to heal things and I feel like I can talk about the wedding now without getting upset. Well, like overly upset. And I think now that we've shifted our focus on to purchasing land and building a house, that has been good for me. Although it's been a bit of a stressful process so far, it gives me something else to concentrate on. In the back of my mind, I'm actually still a little bit worried because like this coronavirus is not slowing down. Parts of the country are still in lockdown, borders are closed, like things aren't back to normal yet. And although the wedding is quite far away, it's in June next year, you know, we've already been going through this for months. So a part of me is still a little bit scared that we won't get to have the wedding we originally wanted. Like at the moment, weddings are going ahead, but there's no dancing. I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like at all the weddings I've been to, Dancing with your friends and family is just so much fun and I want that at our wedding, so. Oh, I don't know, I'm still a little bit scared, but I guess I just have to wait and see. Back to a makeup related question. Makeup and Metal asks, would you ever create your own makeup line? If so, what is the first thing you would make? I don't know if I would create my own makeup line, but if I were going to, I know brands these days, it is all about being inclusive, but I would just like to bring out something, maybe at first, that is specific to fair skin, because that's what I do here. So maybe like a bronzer, blush, highlighter, kind of that area, because, you know, although foundation is a hard one, those categories can also be tricky for fair skin. So. I think they are the kind of products I would like to come out with first and then obviously expand the range to include every skin tone. The next question comes from Rach96 and she says, what advice would you give to your younger self? Oh my God. <laughs> so when I think of younger self, I think back to like high school days and I would tell myself that it's okay if everyone doesn't like you like not everyone has to like you as an adult i know that now and i'm completely okay with that but when i was younger and especially high school days you know i just wanted to be friends with everyone i wanted people to like me and it doesn't matter okay i think especially in high school days you know everyone wants to be popular they want to have lots of friends and now that i've grown up and i do have my close group of friends and people that i enjoy spending time with I don't care if other people don't like me. I don't really want to waste my time with you either. So, see you later. I would also tell myself to get braces earlier. Like, I don't know what I was thinking holding that off, literally. I was meant to get them in year seven and I was like, ugh, no. And then I didn't want to get them in high school because I was like, oh, I don't want braces at my formal. So I ended up getting braces when I was like 21, 22. And then I had to pay for them myself. So if I got them when I was younger, my mum and dad could have paid for it. <laughs> Which by the way, getting braces was one of the best things I've ever done. It boosts my confidence so much. So my teeth, these two here, used to be pushed back. And then, yeah, like that was pretty much it. And my bottom teeth were a bit out of shape as well. But getting braces was the best thing ever. Highly recommend. For my highlight, I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Light Wand. This is in the shade Spotlight. Pretty nice. It's not very often I splurge on a high-end item, but 
Look at that. Pretty. Another question I have here from Rach is, what are your favorite things to do on your days off? So I get Sunday, Mondays off every week. Sunday is the only day off I get with Clinton. So I usually like to have a sleep in because, oh my God, I start work early every day and I like to have a little sleep in. So I usually do that. And then Clinton and I, will usually do something together, whether we go out to breakfast or lunch or just go on a little adventure somewhere. Usually spend the day together. And then my day off on Monday is usually my productive day. So I get my filming done, my groceries done, clean the house, run any errands. It's one of those days, you know? I also love to go and spend time with my niece. She is one and a half-ish. And oh my God, I just love hanging out with her. She is... <laughs> Oh my god. Whenever you see her, she comes running over and gives you a big hug, which, oh, I just love. How loved do you feel when a child hugs you because they want to? Like, not when it's forced. <laughs> you know, like when I hug her and she puts her head on my shoulder instead of me pushing her head on my shoulder. <laughs> Oh my god, it melts my little heart and she loves animals. The other day there was a petting zoo up at the shopping center and so I was like, can I take Aria to the petting zoo? And we went up there and she was just so excited seeing all the animals. <laughs> so I love spending time with her whenever I can as well, whether that's on my days off or after work some afternoons because she's just so precious and is growing so damn fast. We also like to catch up with our friends. We'll usually just do little barbecues at each other's houses. Can't really do much during this time, but you know, we do what we can. And then I also enjoy going to Kmart. So yeah. I just realized it probably sounded a bit weird when I said, <laughs> when I force Aria to love me. <laughs> but I have five siblings and my mum so all of us trying to fight for Arya's love and attention is what I mean. So when she comes to you and wants to hug you on her own, oh my God, you look at the rest of the siblings and you're like, <laughs> she loves me. <laughs> the next question is from Chloe and she asks, what is your spirit animal? I'm a wise wolf. I don't really know. Let me Google if there's a quiz, I don't know how legit this is gonna be. But if I had to like go with something, it would be an animal that is a bit of a leader, but also a little bit crazy. <laughs> so I just did a quick little Google test, first thing that come up, and it says that I am a turtle. It means the turtle totem wisdom teaches us about walking our path in peace and sticking to it with determination and serenity. Slow moving on earth, yet also incredibly fast and agile in water. Those who have the turtle as totem or spirit animal may be encouraged to take a break in their busy lives and look around or within themselves for more grounded, long lasting solutions. I reckon that sounds pretty accurate. I don't know if I would see a turtle as like a little bit crazy though. So I'm not really sure, but there you go. I did a little quiz and I got a turtle. Next question is from Big Hips and Red Lips. Love your username. Is, are you into astrology? Star signs of you and your partner. So I'm not really into astrology myself. I'm open-minded to it, but I don't really look that deep into it. But I do know that I am a Libra. So my birthday is the 12th of October and Clinton is a Cancer. His birthday is the 16th of July. So if you're into astrology, I would love to know your opinions on that. Are we a good match? I hope so. It's been 12 years and we're about to get married. <laughs> I feel as though with us, I don't really know how this relates to star signs or if it's accurate or not, but Clinton is more of a chilled personality. He can be like funny and crazy as well, but when you first meet him, he's not like ah, in your face where I can be sometimes. <laughs> he's a really, really hard worker, really dedicated. Um, he'll do anything for anyone. Like he's more than happy to help. And 
he's just a thinker. Like he spends a lot of time out in the shed, just, I don't know, tinkering around and just fixes things, builds things. Like he's really clever. It impresses me a lot. And then as for me, I'm more of the leader type. I am the eldest of six kids, so I do have this responsibility to be in charge. <laughs> and then again with my work, I'm the leader there, so I do like to take control of a lot of situations. I like things to run smoothly and I feel like I need lists and a plan for everything. So yeah, I don't know if any of those facts relate to our star signs, but there's just a little bit of information for you. And then the last questions for today are makeup related. The first one is from Enchanted Love, who I see you loving my content all the time, so thank you so much, asks, am I a professional makeup artist? No, I'm not. I've never done a makeup course or anything like that. Everything I learnt was from YouTube. I have loved YouTube for years. I remember first watching a video by Crispy and it was literally filmed on like her webcam and uploaded. So I have been watching YouTube for a long time. I think the key is to take everything with a grain of salt. You know, not everything you see online and even not everything that I do is going to suit you. You just need to take bits and pieces from what you hear, try different things, see what works for you, but not everything is going to work for you. That is the reason I started my YouTube channel in the first place, because I could not find any damn information on things that suit pale skin. Every video I was watching, products that were recommended, it just, they did not work for me. There were literally two channels I watched that everything related to me and it was The Taylor and Anna Elaine. They have been my like pale skin gals from day one. <laughs> I did learn a lot from both of them. I learned a lot about products and like product recommendations. And then as for tips and techniques, that's just come from a variety of channels and years of watching YouTube. And just, like I said, trying different things out on me, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work. I do my makeup every day for work, so I do spend a lot of time playing with makeup and trying different things. So I think that is also a big help. I would love to be able to do like those really intense, colorful eye looks with like these insane cut creases. I've tried. I can kind of do it, but my talent isn't like 100% there. I feel like some people are just blessed with the talent of those kind of makeup looks. So, I don't know. Makeup is fun, YouTube is fun. That's all I know, okay? <laughs> and then Jackie Green asks if I can recommend a cream or liquid blush. Well, Jackie, let me tell you, that is one area that I have been playing with so much lately. On my cheeks today, I'm actually using the Maybelline Cheek Heat. This is a sheer gel cream blush. Comes in a variety of shades, easily accessible at Priceline. I have seen quite mixed reviews on this one though, and when I first used it, I did not like it. But what changed the game for me was this brush here by Sigma. So this is the F53 Air Contour Blush Brush. It's a duo fiber brush and it just works so well with cream products. Every cream blush that I use this with looks freaking amazing. So it definitely comes down to the brush you're using as well. Duo Fiber, I think, is the way to go with the cream products. Next, one of my absolute all-time favorites is this Savvy Cheek and Lip Color. So this is only a few dollars from Priceline. It is a cream blush. Super easy to use, long lasting, leaves a nice fresh glowy look, bloody love it. Next, I've been dipping into the Flower Beauty Blush Bombs. I actually have a full review on these if you wanna check it out. We only have two shades available here in Australia right now, which kind of sucks because neither of these shades are like my perfect match. But this is a really nice sheer formula and best applied with your fingers, so you don't need a brush for that one. And then I've also been enjoying the Fenty Cream blushes. 
Do you really need to spend the money on the Fenty one? I don't think so because the Savvy one works just as well, if not better. But the Fenty range does have a massive variety of colors, so. So there's just a few for you. It's definitely been my favorite makeup category lately and I have been loving playing with different cream blushes. All right guys, well that is all from me today. I hope you enjoyed watching and learning a little bit more about me, listening to my thoughts and opinions. I know I do go off on a little bit of a tangent sometimes, but hey, that's what these videos are for, right? If you did enjoy it, please give this video a thumbs up as it really supports my channel. If you're new, I would love it if you would take a look around and consider subscribing. Otherwise, I hope you are all having a fabulous day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.